to start off, this is an introduction to um, API development in Mojolicious. As most of you are here, um, you know APIs are, are all over the place now. Um, there's there's a lot of ways to develop them and program them, and uh, a lot of different solutions, a lot of different setup and deployment, um, all kinds of numbers of things. Um, Mojolicious isn't just for API development, but um, I've done. Um, a lot of things recently that just that this makes it very easy to do to um, create an interface um, for an API and to use the language that I like to use, which is Perl. Um, so, how many have used Dancer, Catalyst, CGI, CGI application? Um, this is just another web framework. Um, the some of the some of the stuff that um, is out there, and and people say, well, why reinvent the wheel? Why? Why use Mojolicious? You know, Mojolicious isn't on CPAN. It, it is on CPAN, but they have their own distribution. You download it from their website and from their stuff. So people say, well, Mojolicious is anti CPAN. It's anti uh, moving the community along. Um, not exactly. Um, it's it's doing things to prog um, progress forward to um, make Perl a uh, a more modern language. Um, they they hear of new technologies and they quickly adapt and change and and are trying to stay up with with the latest and the greatest. Um, from the presentation earlier, you know they said Perl is an old dead language. This this kind of is is cutting edge. It's it's fun. It's exciting. It's it's changing with the industry. Um, so Mojolicious is just a web framework um, based on a lot of the stuff out of Catalyst. Um, there was. Uh, uh, a bunch of guys who've got together and, and a lot of people are contributing to this. Um, it's really kind of slick and just a simple thing. Um, very lightweight, um, very easy to use. Um, so some of the features that are here, um, and this just kind of comes again from the main Mojolicious website. Um, there's a little bit more detail on each, each one of these. Um, it, it is just a web framework. Um, why, why use this one over any others? Um, you know, preference. Um, this might hopefully after the, today you can see some features that this will have that you might might or might not want to use. Um, uh, it's it's more modern. Um, the the people who are actively developing on it are releasing things uh, regularly. Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of plugins available on CPAN that you can go and download to use. Um, and to just get something up and running, very lightweight. Is it's it's very clean out the door. Um, it's it's built off of object oriented principles um, the uh, one of the one of the things that a lot of people have started to use this for is it's it's building in and using web sockets um, and web sockets are kind of uh, you know fairly new to to the um, the internet and some of the modern browsers are starting to um, support the ability to use a web socket um, so that's a very um, desirable feature of what what is available inside of Mojolicious. Um, uh, Built-in non-blocking I/O web server. Um, that's that's a great feature as well. That you know you can be um, serving multiple requests at the same time without um, locking um, and waiting for each request to go through. You can actually be serving and um, doing things in parallel that way instead of um, you know doing things in order. Uh, automatic CGI and PSGI detection. So those of you who are familiar and use use those, you can just use it that way. Um, built on top of that, um, and then where you have the server side and the client side part of this, you actually can do a lot of stuff that LWP. Um, a lot of people are replacing um, LWP modules that they've written and starting to use the um, the Modulus user agent to um, do DOM manipulation um, scrapers. Um, all kinds of things that can be built um, outside of there has great JSON HTML parsing built into it. So installation for Mojolicious is just as simple as running this command. Um, it, it will go through and it, it just downloads all the packages that are um, that are, are available for Mojolicious. It's it's standalone. It doesn't require anything out of CPAN. It won't require anything else outside of um, Anything that you might need to, to put into it. So to just get something started, um, you run that command. It, it depending on your connection and your computer and speed and everything, it takes less than a minute for that to install. 
um, and you can you can get up and, and be running right away. Um, some huge benefits to that are just that it, it makes it really easy for you to um, not have to worry about C panel dependencies or C pan dependencies, um, other code that's out there that might be um, updated or that. It's all contained inside of this. So as long as you're just building inside of this framework, um, you don't have to worry about trying to pull other things in. Um, and then a uh, basic application is just as simple as these three lines. Use Mojo-licious light, um, get, uh, and this is, you know, just route. So we're, we're taking this, we're gonna print out some text, um, and instead of the standard hello world, I heart, I heart Pearl. And then we just start our application. Um, that's a, a fully functioning um, script in three lines of Mojo-licious. Um, one thing of note, too, is, is you'll notice this is the Mojo-licious light module. Um, light does not mean that it's light on functionality or light on um, what, what it's doing. It's, it's light in the sense that it doesn't, you don't have to build all the, the packages and everything. So you can just do small little snippets like this to, to achieve um, what you're trying to do. Uh, so you've written that file. We'll say we've, we've saved that file now into Perl.pl. Um, and then we call Morbo. Morbo is a binary that's, that comes with, with it, and it is the development um, daemon that, that starts the, starts the um, service in the server. So the service is now available at localhost on port 3000. So just by default, it's just going to run locally on, on whatever you define. Um, and then you can on the command line just curl to that, and it's going to print out what we're, what we're displaying in that previous one. So if we come back to that, it's just going to get that, you know, your route, um, and then render what that's going to pass in there. Um, so this is just rendering some text and returning that. Um, then also, again, if you're on your local machine, you can just go to localhost, port 3000, and your browser can render that as well. Um, some other things that are built into um, just the, the, some of the basic stuff of when you start it is you also get um, some standard error pages um, and Mojolicious is, is, is actually quite entertaining when you read the source code. Um, they leave comments in there that are, are unrelated to the, uh, um, the code that you're looking at, but you know, uh, very, very uh, pop culture references oriented. As you could also see already by Morbo, we'll get into some more of that later on. Um, but the 404 error, the standard 404 error will come up and this is what you just get by default. This is Raptor not found. It's the Raptors running off the page. This one's my favorite, the 500 error. We're so sorry something went very wrong with the, the barfing Raptor unicorn that, that barfs rainbows. Um, so you, 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 know, you can see you already get some great error handling, um, some, some things that are already just built in. Um, all from just three lines of code. Uh, we didn't have to do anything else on top of that. Uh, the Mojo-licious framework itself is less than 10,000 lines of code for everything that, that comes with just the, the install. And 16,000 lines of tests. And 16, yeah, it's, it, the, the tests are 16,000 lines. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very well tested as well, but you can see that the tests are, you know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty lightweight. Um, so uh, if, if you're familiar with Ruby or some of the other languages um, that, that you can build off of scaffolding, um, very similar to what you can do in Mojolicious, you have a way to just generate a scaffolding. Um, this can be a little bit intimidating right now as, as you look here, but if we call Mojo generate app hello, so our, our application is just called hello, um, it just, it'll, it'll come out and, and, and print out a bunch of directories and files to just get you started. Um, and if we look here, that can kind of be scary, but if we just highlight the ones that are actually files that it's writing, you know, we have a, um, the basic script that, that, would do, that would do the controlling and, and getting everything started. You have um, your library for your, um, your, your application. You have where you can start to store in some of your, um, your actions and, and some of the controller logic, and it also sets up a basic test file for you, 
and then some of the templating that it, that it comes um, just by default. So you can you can use the templating. Um, one of the the built-in templates that's there it's it's an embedded Perl, so you can basically use your Perl type logic inside of the template. So you're you're you know th those of us that that are familiar with um, templating languages, it's really nice to just have that because you're writing your template in the same language that you're programming in. Um, so the embedded Perl gives you some um, benefit. Now where, where, where this is kind of driven a little bit more on, on API type development and more um, commonly uh, the, or, uh, what, what I'm going to kind of focus on more is a little bit more of the JSON um, returning back. Um, how, how many have worked with um, APIs that have been written in XML or um, you know, uh, other things? And how, how fun those can be to try to parse and, and set up and I can show you my scars. <laughs> <laughs> so you know so uh, you know J uh, as mentioned again earlier too JSON is um, is you know kind of more more modern and, and a lot of a lot of things are going more towards that. Uh, you can then take that JSON and, and put it into any other application. Um, and Mojolicious provides some great ways for you to um, just easily get up and going and, and convert your hashes and your, your arrays and your objects and everything into just straight JSON. So breaking this down now, so we, we're no longer in a um, light application. This is just a little bit more um, structured where we're going to have our routing and our controller interaction. Um, so the application starts and we define um, the package. So this one, was, this one is my app and we use base mojo or Mojo Base, uh, Mojolicious, which just then starts off of that. Then we set up our route, so we'll have a sub startup, and inside of here, we set up our route. Uh, so get hello. Um, you can do get and post requests. You know anything that you're you're familiar with with um, the other um, CGI based uh, routing, um, and then we're going to pass this to our controller. Um, which will be foo hello, and then inside of our our controller, we can we create our new foo controller, use base mojolicious controller. So now this is a controller. Um, inside of here, we have hello. So we're saying go to foo, go to hello, render text. So a little bit more, a um, little bit more code to essentially do the same type of thing that we were just doing before. But now you can break this out so you can do different things inside of your, your startup. You can route um, incoming, incoming uh, requests and incoming traffic to different um, controller objects that you'll create, uh, which gives you the ability to route your traffic to different um, objects once you start getting more complexity. So still very simple here, but you can see that you can just keep building on to the, the complexity of um, you know, or adding on complexity to what you had simple, simplified before. Um, then this gives you more control. You can start doing sessioning. You can do cookie manipulation. You can do um, authentication. Uh, you can start throwing in a, a lot of the other extra things that are that are there that you would want to have around your your framework or your application. Um, so that. Um, Again, right here, when, when you're doing your, when you're rendering, um, and we're, we're passing text here, and so we're just displaying some text. Here, you can, inside your render, you can pass JSON, you can pass HTML, you can say, I want to parse my embedded Perl, and you can pass the, um, the defined, um, whatever your embedded Perl file name is, so you could pass that to index, and that would load your file. So you can pass in anything here in the renderer, um, and you know the, this is also uh, another object that you can either overload or use your own renderer, um, and so that it's great and flexible for whatever your whatever your purpose would be. So inside of the, we'll go into rendering a little bit more now. So inside of the rendering, like I was saying, you can pass in text, JSON text. You can pass along the status. Um, was it a 200 request? Was it a 400, 404? Uh, was it a 500? Um, and then this will this will set up your um, you know your your um, your header information and everything that's being passed back. So we're saying this one's going to be HTML. You know we can pass back uh, 200 request um, application JSON. 
So this becomes really um, useful when you start wanting to write an API. Um, what do you want to do? You want to be able to pass some information to, to your, um, your application, your controller, and give back responses based on whatever information is being passed in. How does Modulicious delineate sessions? Like, how would I gain access to who I'm sending the data back to? Um, inside of there, inside of when you, back here, um, and that's a little bit more beyond what we, we will be talking about here, but you can go and look at it. Inside of here, inside of your startup and your routes, you can um, set up keys and session objects and, and basically set cookies or whatever other type of, um, depending on who's coming from there. The standard session cookie that it passes is a um, uh, SHA-1 sign cookie. That's how it that's how it yeah, and so it, it, it kind of does all, again, a lot of that just for you. So it, it actually is setting some of that up. Um, and we can kind of in, inspect some of that if we get a little bit of time for that. But um, y y you would control all of that inside of here, and you can actually overload the um, your cookie or your default session or, or anything else and set up authentication, anything in here that you would need to to be able to restrict access to your particular API. So you could say, you know, use user authentication. Um, you have to pass credentials in here, do all that. You, you can override authentication steps inside of this and hook into that to be able to uh, make sure that they are who they say they are. Um, depending on what, what type of API you would be building, that, you know, it would, it would just kind of depend on what, what that structure is. If we get time, we can maybe look at some of the, the documentation on some of that. Um, so this is, this is how you would render just if you wanted to be passing along information there. You can see right here as we're again focusing on JSON, this is just a, a hash reference with x equals 3. And then it spits out to the person who's going to be calling it um, a JSON object. And then here is, here's a little snippet of some of the embedded Perl. Um, again, we won't go into that too much here, but you can just see it's... it's um, it, it takes these tags that are here, and inside those, you can replace that with just useful um, Perl uh, scalar swapping, um, loop through hashes. You can do some complex things, and you're basically just writing Perl there. Uh, so it becomes very, very easy and, and um, natural for you to understand if you're used to that and, and like to write those a little bit more. Um, here's a little bit more complex um, JSON rendering that um, we're passing in the JSON again to that. We have uh, a hash reference with um, an array reference inside of that. And then if we, instead of running this in the command line, we're just running through the browser, it's gonna give us out our JSON. So then you can, you know, you can slap, slap that with uh, an LWP, um, a JavaScript, uh, multiple, you know, a browser, um, whatever other application, any programming you want to. Um, this just is listening on, on port 3000 on, on there. So that kind of just runs through just getting something set up, displaying something out, um, and uh, being able to pass along that information to um, the user. You can see there wasn't a lot of code written, um, not a lot of overhead at this point. Um, and you can see where you can easily start to plug in your own, your own code, your own logic, your own sessions, your own cookies, um, and build up from just getting something started. Um, how frustrating is it when you, you have a given task and you, you go to start doing something and, and you don't get to see something working until either weeks or months down the road? Um, right out the door, you can just start building off of something that's working and functioning and, and um, going forward from building and adding complexity into, into whatever you'd be doing. Um, so there's multiple ways to deploy this application now that we have it ready. Um, and you can, use this, you can use the CGI and PSGI um, that, that just come, come out, out normally. And we'll be kind of focusing on basically starting this as your own daemon. Um, you can launch this, you know, through Apache, and um, you know you can do reverse pro um, proxying through Nginx. Um, one of the things we tried recently was uh, we would have uh, the session start, um, and we'd have the daemon listening on a standard port, and Nginx was then um, 
reverse proxying through that port on the other port that we had listening. And you know that works for really small deployment, um, really small production servers, but um, the, the basic daemon that you start is just a single threaded process. So it's, it's again, more ideal for just testing and, and trying to see the, 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 the development. Um, it has more complex multi-threading, pre-forking um, abilities that, that give you um, that, that non-blocking I.O. that um, is, is what we're all trying to kind of look for now um, when you're doing really complex tasks. So the, uh, so we'll mostly be kind of talking about the, the deployment method of, of using the built-in daemon that it has. Um, I've even actually now with, with uh, the, the main one that I have in production that, that I've been using, I'm no longer using um, Apache or um, Nginx or any, you know, Lighty or any of the others uh, server um, daemons in front of it. I'm just using Mojolicious itself to serve the traffic, uh, removing the overhead of writing to disk. I don't need to be logging. I don't need to be doing some of those other things. If you, if you needed logging or um, another uh, level of access or control, or say you don't have access to those ports, you do need to use that. That's still available. But um, we're going to talk about the two the two built-in daemons that um, Mojolicious has. And this gets into some of the humor that they have with um, pop culture and, and that. So. You already saw we had Morbo. So Morbo is built as the, um, the development server. And when you run that from the command line, it will give you um, all of the requests that come in because it's, it's in debug mode already and, and it's, it's going to be putting out all the requests. And you can just watch it from the command line as, as you're, you're testing or, or developing. Um, it gives you the responses, the, um, the codes that um, the, the status is that it's, that it's giving back um, and, and a lot of really good debugging information. You can then also log to the output of that. So inside of your script, if you're running something, you know, how, how, how many of you guys have, have had to try to debug a CGI process that you can only trigger from accessing it through a browser or something? You, you, can't, you can't drill down to it on the, the, the debugger or you need some type of user interaction for it. Um, you can just log directly to that, that debug um, that's coming out. So as something's happening and something's coming along, you can actually see the status requests and, and input that you have. So Morbo is one. The other one that um, is used for production is Hypnotoad. So all glory to the Hypnotoad. Um, some, some great things about Hypnotoad is um, the, uh, the ability to create and, and do the pre-forking, which, which gives you um, a multi-threaded um, uh, daemon that's sitting there and distributing the load through each of the, the child processes. And you can, you can add quite a few onto that and um, you're, you're, it's, it's non-blocking and, and you have, you can be processing quite a few simultaneous requests. Um, and then the only limitation at that point might be your network speed or your hardware or your database or wherever you're harvesting the information to um, display back out to the user whatever action you're taking. You're not you're not waiting or relying on the server or the the, the actual daemon itself to, to be backed up. Uh, another great thing with Hypnotoad is is you can do the hot hot code um, reloading, um, which essentially takes your 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 daemons um, and these these forked off processes that are are running, and when you just call Hypnotoad again. It'll reload all those processes and still be um, returning and serving out data through the processes that are running, and and shift and start loading the new ones that you've loaded in. So essentially, no downtime, um, similar to an Apache Graceful or um, you know uh, other um, uh, other uh, server daemons that that would be out there that would do that. Um, and it's really simple, just, just one command to run that. Um, and we'll get to that a little bit. So a little bit more for Morbo, you just, from the command line, you just um, call the binary again that's included, Morbo, to your script. And it will just, this will run. And so this is running on, in an attached process on your command line. So anything that, if, if you started accessing this, it's going to be debugging out any of your, your requests. 
so you can see what's actually coming in and hitting your server, um, which can be very useful when you're just trying to make sure that the information is um, coming through that way. Then with Hypnotoad, very similar, you call the Hypnotoad binary and script hello. Um, and that's the same command to run or reload your code. So also, say you had compile errors and you're, you're, you, know, you, didn't, you didn't check that you had, did, had compile errors, if you ran that again, it would still keep your current processes running. It doesn't, it doesn't blow those away until it can reload the new ones. So you know, another safety kind of mechanism you know, it's, it can be kind of useful. Um, but hopefully we shouldn't be having code go to production that, that um, doesn't compile right. Um, then to stop it, you just can hypnotoad, pass the S, stop, and, and that'll send a signal to all the children to, to uh, turn themselves off. So uh, you can then, you know, you can load balance multiple servers. We could be running, um, running multiple fr um, threaded processes, and you could be load balancing that traffic coming in and um, you know you could take one out, uh, leave one in. You, you could essentially have no downtime. You could do co-location. You could you could have these running anywhere you would need to, and um, have almost virtually no downtime. Um, so the so the daemons are are very useful um, in, in and of themselves. You you can do other things like. Um, uh, when we first started, we were using Lighty and FastCGI um, to just use the FastCGI process to, to, to do the, the forking and everything. Uh, we also found by accident that um, that process is um, being deprecated by Mojulicious. They're not supporting FastCGI as much. They still have it around and you can use it, um, but going forward, you wouldn't want to, um, you, you wouldn't want to long term or, or production um, use that. It, they're, they're leaning more towards these built-in um, pre-forking options that you have instead of trying to uh, facilitate something like that. Uh, Lighty works really great. Nginx works really great. They're really lightweight. If you needed logging or that, you can still use, you can still use Hypnotoad um, in production and uh, do reverse, reverse um, proxying to those ports and still have that same benefit. So, Instead of having to try to write your own or use something else to, to do that pre-forking, Hypnotoad handles and manages that for you. Um, testing. All of us test our code really well, right? Testing always comes up and, and uh, something that we always think, oh yeah, I'm going to do more testing. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it this time. I'm actually going to write tests. I'm going to do something that will, uh, you know, make it, make my job easier later on down the road. But then you have that um, project manager who says this code needs to be out and we need you on the next thing now. So, uh, you know, testing can sometimes be a lot of overhead that management or others don't see um, as a benefit to you. And with, with this, you know, again, we saw the scaffolding, we saw that this, this builds really easily um, and you, you can just use you know, if, if any of you are familiar with the different test modules, test more and, and test mojo. So you can actually test the statuses and you can start to, you know, do, do the checking of, of did I get the right status, did I get the right um, MIME type, did I get the right result back. Um, you, you know, you can even test the web sockets and it's, it's all built into to your, um, your scaffolding. So you already even have the skeleton. It should be pretty easy for you to either write your test cases first um, and then develop off of that. Um, and and again, as was mentioned, you know, 10,000 line, uh, less than 10,000 lines of core code for this, and 16,000 lines of tests. So they 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 are making an emphasis to try to do the test-driven development, where you're actually you know facilitating that. Um, a lot of really cool things that you can do with with the test driven development there for this. Is that test mojo start a server and hit it, or is it just run it, and run the methods, and pretend like as if it were a server, um, and then hit the requests? There's there's kind of some of both. Um, there's some that it can just you know go through and just test through and run that. Um, there's some that you can actually run as uh, the test daemon, so it'll actually daemonize it, fork itself off. Do everything, and, and then you'd be able to 
to pass into that. But again, you can get as, as complex or as simple as you need to. So it just kind of depends on what, what particular aspect of it you were testing. Most of it, again, would be you know, the RESTful state, so you're just calling a CGI request and, and getting something from that. But if you were testing like the WebSocket or, or some of the others, then it would need to. Yeah. Yeah, pretend like you have the connection and some of the other stuff that's that's there. So um, there's a lot more on the on the testing and, and it's very well documented again on the Mojolicious website. You can go there and, and um, see any of that that you have. So then it's just as easy as again we had our script hello from earlier, so you can just call Perl script hello and then pass it the test option. And it will go through and run all of the tests that are in your um, in your 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 test your test folder from your um, from the original scaffolding that we built. So then if you've added more tests in there or you've done other things, you can also then pass other options of, I only want to run basic. Um, I only want to run um, you know, authentication. I only want to run, or you can call this and it would just run your whole test suite that you have, you have um, alongside your application. Um, so testing, testing your stuff is, is also very simple. So Going from the start to, to testing, it's, you know, we, we have only written a few lines of code, but we already have a lot of power, we already have a lot of testing, we already have a lot of ability to um, render, render our text and, and be able to see that in multiple ways. And um, all, all that you could do within just a matter of a few minutes to just get started. Um, a, a great place, a great way to start. So on GitHub, there's there's a cup there's there's a lot of a lot of open source uh, Mojolicious projects on GitHub. Um, there's a lot of them that um, you know again they're they're trying to be simplistic. They're trying to to do things. Uh, this list is a little bit outdated. Some of them again it will say you know the the Bootylicious and and that. Um, I I actually went and downloaded a few of these and if 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 we get some time I think we're running close to being out. But you can go and look at these. Um, they uh, are, are very, th these ones are based off of just being Mojolicious light, so very small. Um, their goal is to try to do as much as they can. Um, Bootylicious and Booty Light are both um, blog, blog type um, applications that are, are very lightweight and don't rely on a database. They're just, they're just writing flat files into the folder, so it's really easy to deploy them. Um, Run them from wherever you want to, just your local machine. Then you can just copy wherever you have. It's it's easy to move your stuff around, um, and then promoting Git again, you you can just commit all that back into your your repository and check that out wherever you want to. Then you just run that to move that to whatever server you need to. Run Hypnotoad, and you're you're good. You don't have to, you know, spend time configuring Apache and setting up everything else, and and it, it just it's really easy to deploy that. Any any of these or anything that you write, you can you know. Um, move and, and check out. Um, you know, there's Pastelicious, um, you know, a paste service in Mojolicious, um, w small wiki type thing, you know, so, so a lot of people are, are jumping on board to do some, some really fun things. Um, Tweetylicious, uh, Twitter-like, microblogging, um, and all of these are really lightweight. Some of them are, again, a, a couple of years old, and so the newest versions of Mojolicious might not work for them, but you can see what versions they, they would need to run. And again, uh, installing and updating Mojolicious from the beginning, it's as easy as running that one command. If you needed to change versions, you can, you can do so pretty easily in your environment. And here's a listing of some Mojolicious-based applications that um, are uh, full-fledged full applications, not just based off of the light. Um, and these, these again, if, if, you, if you search for Mojo examples, um, there's a, a contributor on GitHub who's kind of packaged these together and kind of keeping tabs on some of them. Um, it was updated as recent as about 15 days ago, so it, it is still still fairly active. So, so there's some sources for you to kind of go and look at um, some actual applications that, that are there and, and things that other people have started to build. Um, so where do you go next? What, what, what else if you wanted to start learning more stuff about Mojolicious? Um, Glenn is one who presented at um, Yapsi uh, last year with his Mojolicious um, stuff. He's, he's done a lot of stuff with uh, Mojocasts. 
Um, if you go to mojocast.com, it has a lot of really good um, video tutorials and, and walkthroughs of how to use different things and, and gets in depth of you know, using the user agent side if you're wanting to do screen scraping with this. Um, you know, L LWP is a great module, but you know, if, you, if you're always out in the, the market for comparing and, and contrasting, you know, he, he shows some good, good examples of how to use that to, to make your requests and start, you know, uh, instead of having an API, connecting out to other APIs and, and communicating with that with just using the small Mojo package. Um, and a lot of other great, great screencasts. Um, there's a lot of great documentation on mojolicious uh, dot US, or it's mojo.us. So it's mojo.us is, is the website that's distributed from. Um, a lot of the, the stuff that I've shown here is just from their really good documentation and their walkthrough. Um, so any questions up to this point? Uh, performance, do they, is, it, is it like Mount Pearl or is it deep, lively or um, in, in what we So in what we've been doing, the, the performance of it, um, kind of some of the benchmarks, um, uh, we the the applications and that what we're using aren't aren't really intense and they just have kind of a back uh, database driven back end. So the example that, that we use is we um, we acquired uh, a chat chat interaction um, software from from another company and, and we've kind of modified it to fit our needs and we we can handle up to you know four or five hundred simultaneous requests um, without any stress or load on the server. Um, now your JavaScript and your front end and your network and uh, some over other overhead kind of get in the way, but the the server is isn't even showing any load. Um, we use about about 15 to 16 um, fork fork thread processes to handle that that much traffic, but it's it's receiving anywhere from you know a thousand to 1500 requests per second, and it, it doesn't have the overhead of logging all of that traffic and everything and so it, I would say in some sense it outperforms like Apache or Lighty or FastCGI and some of those others because you, you don't have some of that other overhead but um, you know we could push that up higher um, depending on how, how your interfaces that are react reacting and interacting with that <coughs> would be so um, performance wise it, it's, it's kind of it, 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 um, when it daemonizes itself it's, it's like Mod Pearl where it loads all that in but if you're not using a lot of other modules and you're just using the default, what, what it comes with, uh, there's not much in memory when it's running. Um, One of the things I've been reading lately that they're working on right now, they're encouraging people that have high performance needs uh, to embed an event, an event loop in the actual application class. Uh, and, and then uh, that way uh, you're able to hit your database, for example, and not be block and, and, and each forked each forked application doesn't need to be blocking waiting for the database to come back. Yeah. You can just wait the event loop and just wait for it to happen and then and then feed it back out to the client. Yeah. And so um, you can actually improve the, the performance just by embedding an event loop. Yeah, and I mean so you could you could do some stuff like that too and I mean you could be handling, you know, thousands and thousands of requests so per second. That. To give control back to like what, what, if you want to do something else while I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. Delicious can basically within its within its own application, each each fork version, you know, each fork on the pre-forking hypnotel, for example, can can be running an event loop, and that event loop can be responding to multiple requests at a given time, and then and then feeding back when it, when the when the data comes back from the database. Yeah. There, so so you can you can gain you know. With a lot of what you have with Mojalicious, it really becomes that that's not going to be your stopping point. You know, your, your bottleneck is no longer going to be the actual application itself. It's going to be that outside variables. It's kind of related. I didn't see much about static files. Like, that there was this, like, what if, do you have to use Nginx to, like, proxy for the requests that are in this to go to that? Or can Mojalicious serve static files as well? Yes, it can, it can serve static files as well. So some of that is, is when you're doing the rendering um, inside of there, you can, you can say, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to set up another server and no. run those through that. You can 
Yeah, and ba and basically, I mean, and this just this essentially replaces your your server and 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 parses all that. So I mean, again, too, you could you could load in your your images or your your text or whatever else, and you could just serve that out from that same thing, and um, you know, just just display that. You change your MIME type to whatever you know your 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 image or whatever, and you just read in the binary and then display it back out. So it does all the caching for you, like yeah. Apache does, so it doesn't smack every uh, one. Yeah, I mean, you, if you got into doing stuff like that, there would be a little bit, you know, it wouldn't, it, this again would be, you know, again, what more what we're showing is is trying to just, you know, you're processing text and, and JSON and, and getting that API stuff back out. So Mojo, Mojo just does have Mojo Cache, I think, is the yeah. that's built into the distribution to handle caching. Yeah, and and so you know, again, by default, you you get a lot. You can go in and look into each of those things. You have you have sessions, you have ca caching, you have, you know, authentication that you can do. You can you can do all that. Um, and again, if you're familiar with frameworks that you've worked in, you know that there's a lot of things that just kind of happen under the scenes that that you just you get that you don't need to worry about. And then as you need to override those or dig into them deeper, you you can get you can get into that level. Um, so some really really awesome stuff. Um, let, let, we're we're kind of getting here towards the end. Um, let me just kind of show you really quickly. Yeah, it's pure. It's a pure pearl. Um, So inside of here, if we look here, this is just one that was um, generated from uh, from uh, the uh, Mojo Generate Light App, and it just generates this light file. I've gone in and modified a few things. I added another another route from. So we just have the main route. If you come in, it will just try to process the index. This is where some of the static files can come in. Is where, where now it's coming down here and calling index, calling your embedded Perl file, and just serving your HTML, um, doing some of your swapping, variable swapping, whatever else you need to. But this is just again a very, very basic um, text swap that that will do. Then here in this one, we you can start. You know, so now we want to grab our parameters. So we'll we'll look for the parameter foo. And when we render it, we're going to just assign foo to whatever we pulled out of our parameters that were passed in. So if we, um, so we call morbo foo, and this comes up and it starts the service. It's just listening there. <coughs> and Oh, yeah, it's Hypnotoad defaults on 8080. Morbo will run on there. So you can see you already start getting the debug from running that in your, um, you can say, oh, your secret password needs to be changed. Um, you know, it, then we can see, we, okay, we had a get to test from our, um, our uh, refer and Routing to a callback, so we routed it so it routes to a callback, and we got a 200 OK, um, and then that that information um, displayed out, and then we didn't pass any arguments along, so that's why that was null. Then if we said foo equals blah, then you can see now that that, that updated because of how we're we're processing whatever came in from there. Um, not a lot of code, but a lot of power that you already have right here. We're not running Apache. We're not running any server. We're we're just running straight off of the um, what's there. So then you you, you know we could do um, so right now I am running. I'm still running the uh, this little hello script through Hypnotoad. So you can see here it's it's um, it's already forked off and running multiples of, of that, so it, it'll handle the requests and the traffic. Um, 
you know, five is overkill for that little script, but just by default, that's what it's going to do to handle the, um, the request. You can change that and you can configure that to whatever. Um, when I was playing around with it, I increased it to, you know, 100 just to, to be seeing what that would do. Um, you know, you get to a point where if you have too many of them, you're, you're losing the benefit of having, having them, so you, you're looking for the balance. They say that you want about one, one to two per core CPU cores that you have available. Um, but then if, if we come back over to, come back over to this, and we just go to 8080, then it's just going to execute that. Um, so, now let me just show an example then. So just mojo generate, um, we'll just do app um, new. And so then that's, that's as simple as getting that started. Then we can just morbo um, new script new. And that'll start that on 3000. We, we just have, have that started up. We can open up a new tab here and, you know, curl. And it prints out the HTML from that embedded profile. So, any other questions? So, to wrap up, um, you know, it's it's an exciting it's an exciting thing. It's it's using Perl. It's using this old language Perl, um, but doing some really awesome stuff. Um, you know, the sky's the limit from here. You know, you can you can go anywhere from here to, you know, creating blog software to creating you know, complex, in-depth APIs, uh, and and it kind of gives back to that. You know, the the it, it kind of stands on that open source, cutting edge, um, leading technology um, that you could do. You could launch this in the cloud. You know, you can do all kinds of things to um, to make this available and and um, some really cool stuff. So, thank you.